Welcome back to your favorite YouTube series, the best Android apps of November 2020. It's been over 50 months that I've been making these videos, so a huge thumbs up for that. As usual, in these videos, I'd like to show off a wallpaper collection, six useful apps that you probably didn't know existed, and four addicting games. If you'd prefer to watch my videos in Spanish, be sure to check out my second channel called How Two Men in Español. Also, be sure to submit all of your favorite apps on my subreddit page at How Two Men to have a chance at being featured in the next segment. Both those links are going to be right below that like button. The wallpaper selection that I chose comes from one of my favorite digital artists called Vance Design. He focuses mostly on abstract or minimal backgrounds, and luckily, a lot of his works can be found within an app called Wally. By searching his name, you'll be able to download and set his artworks as your wallpaper. They all look really amazing no matter what phone you own, each one is unique, and what really attracts me is the color selections. Some of my favorite walls are Sanguinio, Chroma, Tower, and Alpha. You'll definitely find a wallpaper that you'll love within his collections. Moving on, if you constantly receive unwanted notifications and want a simple way to control them better, check out Buzzkill. Within this app, you can create automated actions, and when a notification matches a rule, that notification will follow it. For example, one of the rules that I created is that when I receive a notification and it has the keywords wallpaper or light, it will automatically dismiss it and bring it back at a later time. Or when someone messages me multiple times in quick successions, I can have them only buzz me once instead of numerous times. I can have Buzzkill automatically reply to a message if I haven't unlocked my phone after a while, create a custom vibration for apps or contacts, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. With the option to select or create rules, the possibilities are endless. And making the rule is super easy. You just tap on create rule, then you can choose to have all your apps be affected by the rule or just a couple. Then you can add a filter, such as a phrase or a picture. Choose a schedule if necessary, and then choose an action. From there, save it and make sure it's active. You can also select any of the pre-created rules under the Explore tab. The next app on this list is sponsored, but it's still very useful and has amazing ratings on the Play Store. It's called Action Dash, and if you haven't heard of it, it's pretty much the best digital well-being alternative and screen time app for managing your app usage time. In other words, it learns how long you're using your smartphone every day, how you tend to use it, and then it'll tell you what apps you use the most or are addicted to, so you can restrict them. There are so many useful insights within this app. The global comparison tab gives you an app by app breakdown of how your usage time compares to other users around the world. That way you won't feel bad when you waste your time on social media. You can also keep track of your screen on time, app launches, notifications, and the number of times you've unlocked your phone all on an hourly, daily, or even weekly basis. And within the summary tab, all of that comes together so you can check your phone usage info much more quickly. So if you want to learn more about your daily usage, make sure to check out the app through the link in the description. Definitely recommend it. Now I have apps installed that I barely use, but I keep them around since I still like to use them once in a while, such as Facebook, Google Translate, PayPal, etc. But ever since I found this app called Hermit, I've no longer needed to have the full version of those apps installed. Instead, this app will turn them into a web-based light app. You can choose from the already made light apps by tapping on the plus icon, or you can search up a random website and create it into an app. It won't work for every app or game out there, but you'd be surprised how many web-based apps there are and how much space you'd be saving on your phone. Plus, the best part about creating these light apps is that Hermit will also let you block their pop-ups, force the page into a dark mode, customize the fonts, and a lot more. Give it a shot, especially if you're running out of space on your phone. You know, one of the things that I've always struggled with is finding the latest customization apps. On the Play Store, there are so many KWGT competitors, wallpaper apps, icon packs, etc. And it's tough to figure out which ones have the most active and original developers. Luckily, I came across Bitlit, which is the ultimate news app for every Android customization lover out there. This app will inform you of every app update, promo code giveaways, new app launches, etc. They have a wallpaper section, icon packs, widgets, and KLWP live wallpapers. I've discovered so many great customization apps within Bitlit and it's good to know which apps still have an active developer. The best part is that it's completely free with no ads, so a big shout out to the developer for making this awesome news app. Ever since the OnePlus weather app got updated with the new Oxygen OS 11 update, I haven't really been a fan of the new look. It's pretty boring, barely has any new animations, and I still really miss the old geometric design. 
Recently, however, I found a great alternative called Geometric Weather. Just like the old OnePlus Weather app, it has a fun geometric forecast in the background, and you can still swipe up to bring up the weather information. It tells you the temperature, air quality, wind, UV index, precipitation, hourly forecast, sunrise and sunset times, and much more. You can even swipe left or right to switch between cities. It's a light and powerful weather app that provides a 15 day forecast, so why wouldn't you want to download it? For those who have an AMOLED or OLED display, you're going to love this next app. It's called Always On, and it allows you to customize the look of your phone's always on display, even if your phone doesn't support one. It doesn't require root, but if you have it, setting it up will be a lot easier than granting a ton of different permissions. Either way, once you enable it, you can choose between multiple watch faces, some of which look like they came from Oxygen OS. You can choose which should be displayed on the screen, such as music controls, notifications, battery icons, custom messages, etc. You can change the colors of the icons, include a cool looking background image, or have an edge glow effect when you receive a new notification. On top of that, you can enable a new charging and headphone animation that appears when you plug in your headphones or charging cable. Hell, you can even customize the look of the charging animation. However, I have had a few issues with it, such as when I try to change anything, it'll take a couple of unlocks before the changes appear. Other than that, the app gets the job done. Moving on, Apps Free is a great tool to discover paid apps that are temporarily free on the Play Store. You can filter them by the number of downloads, ratings, categories, hide apps containing specific keywords, and exclude apps made by specific developers. Apps Free will even notify you when a popular app goes on sale and it'll constantly update the list so you'll never run out of fantastic deals. The best part is that you can even disable banner ads for 24 hours just by watching a short video ad. A pretty creative way to get users to watch an ad in my opinion. Of course, other apps do the same thing, but this has an amazing UI and it's very straightforward to use. Let's switch it over to the games now. This first one is super addicting. It's called Boom Slingers. I started playing it just a couple of days ago and I think I already put over 10 hours into it. It's that addicting. It's one of those turn-based slinger games where your objective is to kill or knock your opponent off the course. Each player gets two or three characters and a set of cards used for your attack strategy. Some cards are fireballs, others are massive attacks, while some are just, just made for moving. The battles are 1v1, so it does get pretty intense, and every time you win, you get trophies that help you advance to the higher leagues. You'll be able to unlock cards, upgrade them, change the look of your characters, and a lot more. Just a warning though, if you end up playing this game, expect a bit of rage. Next up we have Zombie Hunter. It's a perfect option if you love FPS shooters and somewhat action-packed gameplay. I'm not gonna lie, it's got a very typical zombie storyline where a chemical created in a lab goes out into the public and everyone turns into zombies. Civilization as we know it has come to an end. But as with any other zombie game, you're just going around shooting zombies. You can't move the character at all. All you can do is aim and shoot. So you'll have to react very quickly since some of the zombies will run towards you or will have a lot of health. As you get further into the game, the zombies will get a lot tougher to kill and they'll arrive in larger quantities. Luckily, you'll be able to upgrade your weapons and purchase more powerful guns. It feels just like an arcade game that you can play at a sports restaurant, so if you're into action-packed first-player shooter games, check this one out. Oculus is a puzzle game and you already know it's going to be one of those games where it's going to get real complicated quickly. The first few levels are elementary, but you'll begin to struggle big time once you get into the higher ones. Sometimes not even knowing what to do. The objective is simple though. You just need to collect all the diamonds and move the orb by swiping your finger in the correct direction. The real challenge though is finding the right path that collects all the diamonds. We've seen this type of gameplay before. I guess it's just in a more modern and minimalist design. There are over 200 puzzles to complete, so this is a good option if you want to challenge your brain. Finally, I saved the best game for last. It's called Far Lone Cells. It's a pricey game at $5.99, but the unique gameplay is totally worth the money in my opinion. You're basically a small little adventurer who has a behemoth of a vehicle. You'll be controlling it by giving it fuel, letting the steam out, making sure nothing catches on fire, etc. And with it, you'll be exploring a vastly open world full of clouds, wind, and a lot of darkness. It does take a while to get the hang of since you won't find a single line of text in this game, but the best part is how mysterious it is. I'm not gonna lie, the controls are somewhat a bit annoying to use and the gameplay is a bit slow at times, but it's still extraordinarily relaxing and mesmerizing. It's just one of those games that don't take too long to complete. It's not trying to get you addicted and after the entire thing is over, you'll be glad that you played it. 
Either way, that concludes the best Android apps of November 2020. I hope you guys enjoyed my selections for this month. And if you did, please do me a favor and drop a thumbs up on this video. It really helps out the channel a lot. Also, if you feel like being awesome, get subscribed while you're at it with the notification bell turned on. We make videos like this every month. Don't forget to check out Action Dash through the link in the description, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!